key labor shortage to persist amid exodus of older workers. Um, I mean, maybe this is a brief moment for us to go to our sponsors at <laughs> B&O Cruises. Oh. Do you have a giant whacking great pension you've just recently accessed? Yes. Have Did you, you pay off your mortgage? Have you paid off your mortgage and immediately got equity relief? Well, take a B&O Cruise. <laughs> B&O. <laughs> Blow it all. Don't tell the kids. Yeah, Boomer, uh, Boomer and Oldie Cruises are part of Equity Release PLC in association with Don't Tell the Kids TM. Okay, we did it, guys. We, we, we finally got it. A... Enjoy the twilight of your years, ruining your children's inheritance. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back to uh, Fitch Ratings. Yeah, there we go. There we, go. We, had to, we had to, as soon as early retirement was mentioned, we had to, uh, we had to go to our sponsor. Um, they'll they'll be back in future i'm sure i'm sure you'll be seeing more of uh bno enterprises and uh equity release industries but uh but but, but we digress here yeah, paul pot mode i support a 2d work week <laughs> good news guys you're getting a zero day work week yeah bad news we're putting you in a hole i know that does sound hilarious that they'd be sort of they'd be the moment of wait no working Oh my god, it's amazing! Oh, like one week later, and everyone's starving to death. Yeah, I thought there'd you know somebody scratching at like bits of grass to get up some roots for some basic sustenance. Or something like you better not be working there. Well, we're being fed uh, a very consistent narrative to justify immigration, really. That there is a big UK labour shortage that is partially being caused by an exit for older workers, which is true. But again, that was really just caused by the and lockdowns, as, as we covered and, the skill yeah. collapse stream. Yeah. The workers that are leaving in larger rates, the older, the yeah. more skilled, yes. those with expertise that are irreplaceable because one, we can't train people to do the same. Two, nor can you import people that will do the same job. No. It's just not going to happen. There, We have some of the best engineers and the best skilled people in the world in that sense. We export them all over the world. They've built large parts of Dubai, of Saudi, of China. Um, and those people are irreplaceable. They they quite literally were the best in the world. Well, th- this is the thing I sort of joked to you as well, though, earlier on. It's like, we import a million people a year. Yes. And we have a labour shortage. You know, let's just take that at face value for a moment. How bad are they organising our country that they can import that many people a year and can't find jobs for them? Well, we mentioned of course, that- that's not how... Yeah. Yeah. How it works in reality. No. But for a moment, you you hold these two things in your head, and it's like so. There's there's, there's seven digits worth of people coming in, but yet we're we're four hundred thousand people short of jobs, and but you know there's a surely there should be some correcting effect there, but clearly there isn't. No, it it does not appear to be self correcting, and once again, the importation of labour doesn't appear to affect the amount of labour that gets done. Uh, make of that what ah, you that's will. It. We have to increase it to 2 million well, people a year. That's basically what some of them say. Um, but I wanted to juxtapose the the idea that we have this massive shortage of workers with what is considered economic inactivity. And I got asked, well, economic inactivity is different than being unemployed, isn't it? Well, the problem is that economic inactivity has been redefined several times, as has yes. unemployment. And the unemployment rate in Britain is so low because to be classed as unemployed, you have to have been actively seeking work in the last four weeks or and be able to start work within the next two weeks. If you are not either of those things, you are no longer classed as unemployed. Yeah. Now, someone in chat who... And we're making no accusations against the people in chat, but if anyone did happen to claim GSA and would like to tell us about whether or not they actually ask you this question on a regular basis, we would appreciate that. Because I, I do wonder, is this just a tick box... Do they just phone, basically phone you up and say, right, I'm going to phone you in five minutes. Uh, you're going to tell me you've got an appointment with a social worker on this date, and that means you're economically inactive for the next four weeks. And there's just this sort of never-ending cycle of people who, because they're away to Malaga this week, they've got a doctor's appointment next month, they've got the social workers two weeks after that, then they've got someone else in their house doing some work three weeks after that. that they just indefinitely have a reason to be "Quote unquote economically inactive." Well, it also interfaces with the way the benefit system works, as we'll get into, and the way that uh, people are classed on paper seems to have been fiddled around quite heavily. There's an interesting stat here that we'll get into as well, because they talk about you know there's all the historic <clears throat> stuff, employment in April, 
uh, they, t they, they bring out a, a per capita rate here, which seems incredibly steady if you look at it. Yeah, like, right, you know, through the 70s, through the height of the winter of discontent in the 80s. Yeah. You know, where it nothing seems to, if you look at some of the other graphs, really jump out over, what was it, sort of 20% or something? It seems to hold that level flat. It's very, very, very similar, it seems. If if you believe the statistics, and there are actually a lot of reasons not to believe these statistics, but we'll get into a bit later. A lot of it is to do with the way that they've reclassified them, the way they didn't used to measure economic inactivities in the same way. But if you take these figures at face value, it seems that the unemployment rate, the economic conditions, and the shape of society at large doesn't seem to actually affect the amount of people who are economically inactive. Now, if that were true, that would be slightly revelatory and would mean that economics as, as, as they practice it doesn't real. Uh, it would also mean there's something fundamentally wrong with our post-war society, which is probably true. But I, I do not think that these figures are particularly reliable. Well, the, the, there would be a massive spike at the start of 2020 yeah. because everyone was economically inactive. They were paid not to work. For 18 months and I think, above. I think this is a testament to the fact that really since the 1950s, the UK has been able to shuffle people on paper mm. into different places in which a certain segment of the population always ends up in some conglomeration of categories which leaves them as economically inactive rather than being purely unemployed. Mm. But I, as we'll get to later, the statistics themselves largely well, break down we, in these we get areas. To, we get to the, the BBC one you've got here yeah. next, which has a compendium of some of the similar statistics from ONS. And there's a couple of interesting ones in here because we're about to discover the power of other. The other and the unknown are very large factors do you, in here. Do you have data sets that you can't quite fully make sense of? Don't worry. Just classify up to anywhere between a fifth to a third of your total data within one category is just being caused by other. And then don't tell people what the other cause is. <laughs> oh, I forgot to say uh, thank you, was Rat it, Face. Yeah, for the I was going to say Rat Face. For his two, two bucks. Thank you for the, thank you for the two bucks. Uh, we are now £1.62 richer. You can buy us uh, maybe a third of a pint. <laughs> but the this is one of the more general uh, economic inactivity articles because even the media has to acknowledge the fact that unemployment and economic activity are being shuffled around with each other and what most people understand as being unemployed most people who are that are classed as economically inactive uh, and it's been rising it's been rising quite rapidly which is strange because apparently it's not been rising per capita mm. Um, but it has been rising but it's not been rising but it's real but it's not but the, the reasons for it the great resignation but they aren't um, so we'll We'll get into some of this because again, I, ah! there's, there's some, we'll cut through all the bullshit at the end. But there is some great stuff in here about one, how regime stati uh, statistics don't work, and two, how regime narratives don't even explain their own statistics. No. <laughs> Welcome to unreality. <laughs> um, who are the Britons? Millions of Britons not working. Uh, it's great. U UK's low unemployment rate. The percentage of economically inactive people aged from 16 over who are unemployed. Yeah, so look at this. This graph says in the height of the, uh, the mid-80s, 12% unemployment. Yeah. How is it that the economically inactive number across those, you know, from 1980 to 2000 here, we've got a swing from, you know, 5%, 4.5%, right all the way up to 12 Yeah. And it comes all the way back down to 7 And then it's all the way back up to 10 And it's all the way back down by 2,000 to sort of 5 4.5%. Why is it flat on the other graph? Yeah. It's bizarre that, the, like I said, the amount of, of people that the government classes as economically inactive has no relation to the unemployment rate. And that does not that doesn't work. Well, no. What it tells us is that the the economically inactive statistic only really exists to help explain away otherwise. Yeah. Employment. Well, this is why I I'm saying that there's been a large reclassification that's happened. Yeah. That we have this supposed labor labor shortage that justifies immigration, 
record low unemployment, and yet... Well, obviously, you also mentioned in here that their margin for error is close to half a percent. Which is relatively high. Um, who isn't working and why? The main reason for not working vary according to age. Most of the 2.7 million inactive people under 25 are students, according to the Office of National Statistics. The thing is, that didn't used to be the case either. Students used to have jobs as well. Yes. The majority of them don't want a job, which, again, is wrong. If you're age 16 to 24 and you've not got a job, there is something wrong, generally. Well, the, the, there's weird things in here, though, because this idea of does not want a job, it's like, well... How do you know that? But also, it's so momentary. Yeah. Okay, in this specific moment, some people don't want a job, but there might actually be a reasonable subset of people who could wait out, say, a six-month period because they think more certainty is going to come down the line and would want a job later rather than now. Now, how do you classify that as someone who wants a job or someone who does not want a job? Yeah. Well, anyone who's a student and can't find work is automatically never classed as unemployed. That's been a great fiddle. Uh, but you've got obviously two point uh two point one six million here unemployed sick, but you've got as big as sick is other, but they've just again they only break it down by gender. There's no saying what other is. Other is bigger than caring in that. Again, other is bigger than student. But they've tried to engage in a little bit of trickery by yeah. making the word smaller than student in the twenty five to forty nine category. It's only you know it's not. It's more than half what the unemployment rate is than that. No one seems to quite know what these others mean. And what the other is in a data set like this would be extremely important. The reasoning for this does not seem to have been properly investigated. And again, the large thing here, yes, 50 to 64, there's more early retired people, but there's more sick people. There's, yes. There is a larger amount of people age 50 to 64 who are economically inactive because they are long-term sick than are who have taken early retirement. 